We know that all regular languages can be expressed using finite machines or regular expressions. And all regular languages will share the same properties, such as the closure properties that state that the regular operations union, concatenation, and star of regular languages are still regular. This video will look at another property of regular languages, called the pumping lemma. However, if you already know how the pumping lemma works but specifically want to know how to prove non-regularity, check out our other video on non-regularity instead. Link is in the description below. The word lemma in mathematics refers to a mini-theorem. And simply, the pumping lemma states that if a language is regular, then every string in the language will have a section that can be repeated or pumped any number of times and still be in the language. It's a pretty incredible property, and as usual, we'll try to provide some intuition for the concept instead of the technical details. So, how exactly does the pumping lemma work? Let's take the regular language A that contains every string that ends with 1 1 and its DFA as an example to understand the pumping lemma. The pumping lemma states that all strings in the language can be repeated or pumped if they are at least as long as a certain length, which we call the pumping length. Let's call this pumping length P. For our example, we can assign the pumping length to be the number of states of A's DFA. So P will equal 3. Now let's see how the machine runs on some strings in A that are at least length 3, such as 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, and 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. For all these strings, there must have been at least one repeated state which can provide a section of the string being pumped. So for 0, 1, 1, we revisited Q0 using the substring 0. For 1, 0, 1, 1, the substring 1, 0 took us between Q0 and Q1. For 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, substring 0 allowed us to revisit Q0. And for each of these substrings, the pumping lemma states that we can pump them as many times as we want and the resulting string will still be in the language. Now notice how we can separate these strings into the part before pumping, the part being pumped, and the part that takes us to the accept state which if you look at the formal statement of the pumping lemma, is what all this means. The following three points are just some more technical conditions. The first point says that for any string in the regular language, there will be a part that can be pumped any number of times, which we call y. The second point says that the length of y has to be greater than zero, which means we cannot pump the empty string. So if we look at each string as three parts x, y, z, the part y being pumped cannot be empty, but x and z which are the parts before and after the pumped string can be the empty string. And we saw this in our examples. For 0, 1, 1, 0 was the part being pumped and 1, 1 was the part that came after. So in this case, x, the part before pumping, is empty. Point 3 says that the length of y can be at most p and must occur within the first p symbols. So if we look at our previous example, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, we cannot pump 1, 1, 1, 1, for example, because the substring 1, 1, 1, 1 has a length larger than p equals 3, and our pumping string has to be within the first p symbols, so the first three symbols and 1111 is not within the first three symbols. So as long as a language is regular, then every string in the language will be able to meet these three conditions. So to sum everything up, the pumping lemma is another property of all regular languages. So if a language is regular, the pumping lemma states that every string in the language whose length is at least that of the pumping length p can be pumped any number of times and still be in the language. And why do we need to know this? 
Well, we actually use the pumping lemma as a way to prove that some languages are not regular, which we will look at in another video. So check it out if you want to know how we can use the pumping lemma to do that.